Father O'Malley. Yes. Welcome to St. Mary's, Father. Thank you. I suppose you're tired out here traveling. Oh, yeah, it's pretty tiresome all the way in the day coach. Well, then I'll take you up to your room. It's all ready. There's nothing to do now but go to bed. Is Father Fogarty still here? No. They took him away this morning. Poor man. My heart went out to him. Poor man? Why? <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> Well, I think you'd find everything you want here, Father. Uh, sure, I couldn't get you a cup of tea now. No, oh, thanks. I don't understand what you mean about Father Fogarty. I'll find out. I'll find out what? What Father Fogarty found out. Oh, the poor man. There you go again. What, what happened to him? They took him away mumbling to himself in a wheelchair. They took him away? Where? Shady rest. He even said a prayer for you that your stay here might be successful and enjoyable, though he doubted it very much. You see, he had very definite ideas about running the school, about the raising and education of children, and so have they. They? His sisters. Father Fogarty said they wanted their way in everything. And after he was confined to a wheelchair, they had it. Maybe he was just getting along in years. Huh? He looked all right when he got here. That's strange. I don't anticipate any trouble. You don't, eh? You've never been pastor of a parochial school, then? No, it's my first experience. Oh. Well, I can see you don't know what it means to be up to your neck and none. No. Well, good night, Father. Good night. Sleep well tonight. I'm Father O'Malley. Good morning, Father. This is our school bell. We usually ring it about an hour from now when the children are here. I see. You think I could see Sister Superior? Is she up yet? I'm sure she is now, Father. <laughs> Will you come with me? Yes. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Sam. Benedict and the others are very eager to meet you, Father. Please sit down and I'll tell her you're here. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. Our cat had kittens and they're all over the place. Father's a member of the parish, I presume. Excuse me, Father. I'll tell Sister you're here. Please. 
Good morning, Father. Yes, it's been my... Father, this is Sister Superior. Father O'Malley, Sister Mary Benedict. How do you do, Sister? How do you do, Father? Sisters, this is Father O'Malley. How do you do? Father O'Malley is here as a substitute for Father Fogarty, who, as you know, has departed for a much-needed rest. We do hope your stay here will be a pleasant one, Father. Thank you, Sister. We're looking forward expectantly to your views as an educator. I'm sure that Father wishes to say a few words to us. Well, yes, I... <clears throat> St. Mary's has been here a great many years. It has seen the labors of a, of a good number of the sisters of your order. And I know that the work hasn't been easy. In the eyes of the world, very few even take notice of it. But earthly honors and rewards are, are not for you. You've sent forth generations of pupils who have been a credit to the, the teachings inculcated here. St. Mary's has grown old, doing good. As for myself, may I tell you that I'm happy I've been selected as pastor of St. Mary's. <laughs> <laughs> Working in a parish where there's a parish school is going to prove a new experience for me, and, and I'm sure a very interesting one. <laughs> See what you mean. <laughs> uh, however, as in all things, we assume the tasks assigned to us without complaint, and with a hopeful view to the future. <laughs> yes. Uh, by uh, the Epistle of St. Peter, where, it's, where he says, uh, Be sober and watch. <laughs> with St. Paul? <laughs> now, just to get serious for a moment, it, uh... <laughs> In conclusion, may I say that I'm happy I've come to take... I'm sorry, but uh, that's the first bell, and the sisters have to go to their classes. Uh, would you like to say a few words to the pupils before the second bell? You may prefer speaking to the children. <laughs> I'd certainly be more at ease. Yes. I want to speak to you, too. Our new pastor, Father O'Malley, wishes to speak to you. I'm sure you'll be very glad to greet him, and I'm also sure that he has something very important to say to you. Well, children, you're going to see a lot of me in the future. I'm going to be around here a great deal. You're going to hear the shortest speech ever heard. This is a holiday. Everybody, take the day off. Pretty effective speech, huh? Oh, I had to get my self-confidence back. See, when we were kids, we used to just live for holidays. We should never get too far away from our childhood. Do you realize what you've done? These children are liable to get into mischief. And the responsibility is yours. Well, it seemed like a good idea. But you can't call a holiday just like that. You, you have to get the permission of the superintendent of schools. What will we tell him? Well, I'll call him. There's a man that really needs a holiday. I, I may give him the day off. My school wasn't like this. The 
Yeah, I could look out the window and see fields and trees and the old swimming hole. You know, hang your clothes on the hickory limb and the last one out finds them tied up in knots. <laughs> Where, Father? Missouri. I came from Ireland. Big into Galing? <laughs> I used to. <laughs> Where are you from, sister? I was born in Sweden, but when I was very small, I came up, to... Up, 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 don't tell me. In the salt, well, That's right, Father. <laughs> I love the winter. I used to ski to school, and there was one big hill. And... <sighs> you carry him home, Esther. <laughs> <after. laughs> you wouldn't guess it, Father, but she was a tomboy, from what I hear. So? Yes. She used to play baseball and football with the boys. How good were you at the... Oh, I hit over 300. Oh, that was in the wheat belt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess we all had it better than these kids, didn't we? They haven't even got a place to play. That used to be our playground. Oh, over there where that is? Yes. We had to sell the ground. We needed money to fix our building. They were going to condemn it. Where'd you put the money? Oh, you'd be surprised, Father. We had to put in a new sprinkler system, new fire escapes. When the foundation had to be reinforced, it was very expensive. Hardly seems worth it. We think so, Father. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <clears throat> what are the other classrooms like? Uh, say, what's uh, going on up there? Oh, we're repairing the roof. It leaks. Trifle. It's very overcrowded here, too, aren't you? Oh, yes. A trifle. Looks like St. Mary's is in a bad way. Try it. We're relying on you to help us, Father. Too bad you don't have a building like that now. That'd be your answer to everything. That's what we intended to build our new St. Mary's. A building very much like that. There it is. Only we don't own it. Confidentially, Father, that's what we've been praying for. Praying for what? That the owner will wake up one morning and give it to us. That who would wake up when and give you what? Mr. Bogardus, the owner. That's what we're praying for. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. <laughs> well, if faith can move mountains... When you figured you could just move right in, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, you got to be practical, let's face it. Does the owner know anything about this? Anybody ask him? No, we just prayed. That's where you could help us. Well, what do I do when he says no? I think we'd better go now. And you can tell him why the children aren't in school. You want me to say anything about the building? Some other time. Hey, hey, you, here. Well, what's going on here? You see that fence? Yeah. You see what those children are? Who are you? Well, I'm the new pastor. Oh, you are, eh? Well, I want you to see to it that those little brats are punished. I'll take care of it, Mr. Bogardus. I will censure them severely. Oh, so you know who I am, huh? Yes, I do. Are you the fellow I'm supposed to do business with? Well, I've been sent here by my superiors to make some recommendations, if that's what you mean. I've been looking over the school. Oh, you have, eh? Well, there you are. What do you think of it? Looks pretty tired. <laughs> tired, eh? Tired is no name for it. And if you don't sell it to me, uh, you got my offer, didn't you? Get right here in my pocket. Well, what do you say? It's a difficult decision to make. I, I can't jump at it. Well, I warn you, if you don't sell it to me, it's going to be condemned. By whom? City Council. How do you know? I'm chairman. Oh, oh you are, huh? You're darn right I am. <laughs> and when they order you to tear it down, you've got to pay for it. You look like a practical man, Father. I do? Well, take my word for it. There's not a mother or father in the parish that wouldn't rather see their children over at St. Victor's. Fine, modern building. Everything up to date. Sunlight, good heat in the winter, 
I wouldn't think of sending my children into that fire trap. Do you have any children? No. Well, that's a long story. Oh, skip it. Just being practical, Mr. Bogartis, how far did the children have to go to get to St. Victor's? Just about as far as I had to go when I was a child. Well, well, let's walk over. Well, why not take my car? Can't walk too much. I got a bad ticket. Let's ride out to St. Victor's and take a look. Now you're talking. All you gotta do is close this school and send the children over to St. Victor's. Sell the property to you. That's right, it's that simple. Well, you can always find me. I'm here all day and every day. <laughs> I promise I won't make a move without talking to you. Take a little while, though. I'm pretty slow thicker. Well, you don't look it to me. No, sir. Goodbye. Are you in charge of the school here? Well, that's a question. I have some authority. Uh, you look like a man who could understand my language. Well, let's find out. Start talking. I like very much to put my daughter in school here. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, well, I, I think it'd be better if she was away from me for a while. But she bored be arranged. But why did you... Does she need any references? I mean, well, you have to know very much about her background. Oh, yes. That, that is customary. Well, um, it's like this. I, I ran away from home when I was very young to get married. Stop me if you've heard this, Father. He left me a long time ago in, in Syracuse. Thirteen years, to be exact. Did she get married? Oh, yes. After a little argument, uh, I, th I think he was a little afraid of settling down. Uh, he was a piano player. Oh. He had a wonderful smile, Father. How very he had. Uh, very like yours. He had a little band, kind of um, a, a non-recording orchestra. Did you ever hear of Gallagher's Gambolivers? No. Did anyone else? I doubt it. Well, uh, anyway, the, the little band got an offer to uh, play in Cincinnati. And he promised as soon as he got a few dollars ahead, he'd, he'd send for me. So you were left alone in Syracuse? Till the baby came. You've been supporting her all this time? Mm-hmm. I suppose you're wondering as to how. So she. She's, um, she's getting to be a big girl now, Father, and she's beginning to think I'm no good. I want to put her in your care before she finds out she's right. Well, I feel anyone who's as much concerned about their daughter as you are isn't doing too badly. If there was anything really wrong with you, you wouldn't give a darn. Joe was the only man I was ever really in love with. Well, if you care as much for Joe as you say, uh, why didn't you ever look him up? I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where to start. Besides, he ran out on me, Father. Oh, well, that's it. Well, I'll do the best I can for you. You send your daughter to see me. What's her name? Patricia. Patricia. I tell you, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. I'll take care of your daughter. You'll take care of yourself. Thank you, Father. Father. O'Malley. O'Malley. Goodbye, Mrs. Gallagher. Goodbye. Father. Mm-hmm. The young lady calling to see you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Send her in. Miss Gallagher? Yes, Father. I've made arrangements for you to board across the street with Mrs. Breen. Oh, well, that will be just. Lovely. My boy will take your bags. Eddie, take those bags over and put them in the back bedroom. Okay, Mom. Well, Patricia. I 
think the sisters were expecting someone much younger. And so was I. Oh, well, I, I was trying to look older, Father. I've been out looking for work. I thought maybe I could quit school and take a job. I was up real early answering ads. I'm perfectly able to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. well, Patsy, I think you're going to be very happy here at St. Mary's. You're going to enjoy every minute of it. You'll find that life can be very bright, very beautiful here. The character that came off. Let me take a look at you. Oh, that's fine. Yes, sir. You just give us a chance, Patsy, and we'll fix you up. What do we got here? What are you smuggling? What is, what is this here? What is this? It's a rat, Father. Well, you'll find around here that you can't even wear even a small <laughs> mouse. <laughs> Things are brightening up already, aren't they? Oh, goodness. Holy Toledo. Look at it. Sent for me, sister? Yes, Patricia. I wanted to talk to you. You're falling behind in your studies. If the work is too hard for you, Patsy, I'll be glad to help you. If there's anything I, well, I can do. Well, that isn't it, sister. I, I guess I'm just sort of a featherhead. Don't you like school? You're holding back on me, Patsy. What's troubling you? Nothing, sister. If you'll only work a little harder, you'll get good marks. We want to send your mother a nice report card. You want your mother to be proud of you, don't you? That's all, Pat. Thank you, sister. Hi, Beth. Hi. How's she doing? Not very well. Oh, no? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. When we accepted this child, it was on your recommendation. We know very little about her parents. What kind of a home life did she have? Oh, you know, the usual... Uh... You, you said you met her mother. Oh, yes, yes, I have. Do you know Mrs. Gallagher well? Mm, yes, yes, I know her quite well. And her father, did you meet him? No, but I've heard about him. What is his occupation? He's a uh, musician. They tell me he has a charming personality, too. I like people who like music, don't you? Are they separated? Yes. Is there anything, anything that I should know that would help? Well, no, that's, that's all that I, uh... Care to tell? Well, yes. Did anyone ever tell you that you have a dishonest face? For a priest, I mean. Break it up. I'll knock your two heads together. The winner. Yeah, you're pretty shifty, aren't you? Let's see how you operate here. Hey. Whoops. Can't wear a glove on you. Look at your shoe. <laughs> you gotta watch all Eddie. the time. Eddie, come over here. You better go inside and wash your face. Why don't you fight back, Eddie? You're a pretty handy lad. What's your name? Tommy Smith, Father. Tommy Smith. Well, keep your head up now. Yes, Father. He's all right. I think you better speak to Tommy, Father. He's a new boy here, and I'm afraid he's a troublemaker. Oh, he's a good fighter, though. We don't tolerate fighting in this school. I think you better speak to him. Because if he continues to pick fights, we may have to send him to another school. Oh, but aren't we supposed to be educators, sister? I mean, uh, instead of sending him away, let's try and correct him. I observed very little correction in your attitude, Father. As a matter of fact, I detected a slight note of pride. Naturally, I like to see a lad who can take care of himself. On the outside, it's, it's a man's world. How are they doing, Father? <laughs> I'm not doing too good, but 
You know what I mean. Uh, sometimes a man has to fight his way through. Wouldn't it be better to... to think your way through? Well, that's pure conjecture, of course, from someone on the inside. Very well put, though. But don't you think sometimes in raising boys, a, a woman's influence can be carried too far? You mean they may become sisters, Father? Yes, yes, that's right. Well, you look after Tommy, and I look after Eddie, who lost the fight because he listened to me. Eddie? Yes, sister? Come up here, and I'm going to fix you. Let me look at that. Tell me, how did all this happen? I was going along, minding my own business, when Tommy trips me. Although I was very mad, I controlled myself, sister, just like you said. And I said to him, why'd you do that? Then what did he say? Didn't say anything. Just hold off and hit me right here. Oh, fine thing. Now then, what did you do? I remembered what you said, sister. And I turned the other cheek. Then he really let me have it. Well, you're a very good boy, Eddie. I turned away to ignore him, and then he kicked me. I'm very proud of you. I don't feel so hot. No, no, Eddie, but, but you really won a victory over Tommy. Did I, sister? Yes, you were really the better man. You and I know that. Nobody else knows it. To tell you the truth, I don't know it. I don't think anybody was proud of me. And even Father O'Malley. Don't you think he thought Tommy was the best man? Better man. I was thinking, sister, since I've taken such a beating and I've been through so much, maybe I wouldn't have to go to school today. Maybe. Oh, but if you think I should go, sister, I'll go, no matter how bad I feel. <laughs> well, maybe I'll declare a holiday, just for you, Eddie. Thank you. Are you interested in baseball? Yes, yes. Sir. Tell me, have you any textbooks on the manly art of self-defense? I beg your pardon? <laughs> she means pugilistics. I mean boxing. Boxing? Yes, yes, of course. They're right over here. Well, here's a book endorsed by James J. Corbett. He won ten straight fights. Nobody could lay a glove on him till Fitzsimmons knocked him out. Did Mr. Fitzsimmons write a book? No. Oh, there's a very uh, scholarly book here by Mr. Tunney. Oh, well, we'll take that. That'll be one dollar. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, sister. Ben thought it now is Dominic Zachary, a fellow coming to visit. Then we'll get it in the second hour. Thank you, Jackie. This table is going to get it in my room. That's fine. It's nice of you to come on a Saturday, Eddie. It's worth it, sister. I'll have you know I read this whole book last night. It's just what we need. Your homework, sister? <laughs> now. The four most valuable punches, it says here. Ah, now let me show you. A straight left, a right cross, a left hook, and a right uppercut. See? Now, let me see how you stand. 
Where? Like that? How do you fight? Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing like it. We have to start from the beginning. Now, put this foot back a bit. Back. See how I stand? Like this. And bend your knees a little bit. Bend them. Your toes should be in here. That's right. You have to bend your hands up like that. Yes, that looks pretty good. Your head should be down. That's right. Now, that's fine. Now, just like that. Uh, let me see now what we do next. Yes, we start to move around. We move around a little bit, just like that. And keep, keep, um, uh, keep shooting your, your left. Right. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. That's good. And that, now, Eddie, keep, keep your chin down. Keep your chin down. Like this, and you can get your shoulder up. Well, I, <laughs> I can't do it so well in this color. But you know what I mean? You, you keep, you protect your chin that way. You see? And another thing, you have to be weaving. Weaving. That's right. And bobbing. A moving target is much harder to hit. Remember that. For instance, if I try to hit you on this cheek, yeah, then you move to the other side or you weave. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. You should be weaving. You see what I mean? You should be weaving. See, like that. And now, the other side. That's right. Now, faster. That's right. Gosh, sister, that's better than turning the other cheek. It's much more fun if they miss, don't you think? Well, I'll admit it's easier on your face. You said it, sister. Well, now, who were we? Although they say this is the most valuable punch of all, the left jab, it seems this is the payoff. Now, now we'll try both hands. One, Eddie, keep your mouth closed. Now, that's very important. Keep your mouth closed. The man devoted two whole pages to that. But all he meant was that if you don't, you'll be sorry. Now, keep your mouth closed. Very tight. Now, you'll do both hands. Now, if I try to, if I try to hit you here, you block it with this hand, you see? That's right, and you block it. There, and then under again. That's right, that's right. But be careful, look out for the payoff. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things to remember, Eddie. Lefts and rights and bobbing and weaving. Let's try them all now. Move around, move around. Come on, here we go. Look me right in the eye. See if you can anticipate my blows. Look out now, look out. Oh, oh well, that was very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you learn fast. That's right. Now, let's go again. Come on. All right, all right. You, you, uh, you, you're so clumsy. You have to be up on your toes. Move around quickly, you know? Oh, that's my fault. I forgot to tell you about footwork. It says there, footwork is almost the last art. It's very important. We have to learn it. It's lots of fun and you're going to like it. See? Sometimes it gets very fancy. Yes, it's... Well, maybe... Maybe that's too much for the first lesson. Yes, I think so. I think we'll wait. We have enough to think about. Come on, let's just try now to, to, um, you try to hit me. That's right, come on. Come on, like that. Uh -huh. That's right, and then then it's not, see, you just can't hit me, can you? No, go ahead, Eddie. Go ahead. But I don't want to hit you. Oh, don't worry. Come on, come on, I won't be there. Come on. Ah, see? Hey, you see what I mean? You just have to... <laughs> I'm sorry, sister. No, well, that's all right. It's enough for the first lesson, though. You forgot your footwork. You forgot something, didn't you? <laughs> something? <laughs> I forgot everything. I forgot to bob, I forgot to weave. I had my mouth open. <laughs> I ran right into the payoff. <laughs> Good evening. Pass, it's right in here. Good. Oh, Father. Eddie. Now, will you stop that now and get off the bed? Stay up and get a draw. Whoops. I don't know what's the matter with him, Lizzie. He's been acting very peculiar. I, I think he's been out in the sun too much. Not during school hours, I hope. Good evening, Patsy. Good evening, Father. Uh huh. You're up a little late tonight, aren't you? What's, uh, what's the matter? You in trouble? Father, don't you think I ought to quit school and maybe take a job? What can you do? You have to know something to do anything, you know. 
You shouldn't get discouraged, Patsy. I've been watching your marks, and they're all right. They're getting better. Oh, Father, you're just being nice. I don't know. Every time I think I know one thing, then they ask me something else. I'm just a perfect blank. Guess I haven't got what it takes. Oh, now, don't you ever think you're dumb. All right, Father. Let's just say I'm not very bright. What's the uh, problem tonight? Why are you up so late? It's an essay, Father. The five senses. That's an interesting subject. What have you discovered about them? Nothing. <laughs> see what I mean? Well, what are the five senses, Patsy? Well, to see, to hear, to taste, to smell, to feel. That's right. Who's the essay for? Sister Benedict. Sister Benedict? Oh, we're going to have to take dead aim on this one. See if we can get you an A. No, but you don't want to be like the rest of the class. They're all going to come up with those same stereotyped answers. We want to be different, be unique. We'll write, sister, an essay on another sense, huh? Let's see. Man is endowed with certain powers, which we call the five senses. Now, if he has common sense, he'll get great happiness out of life by using these powers within right reason. For instance, you're happy you came to St. Mary's, aren't you? Yes, Father. Be, to be glad you're alive, to be grateful because people are kind to you, to be able to see some of nature's great wonders, the budding of the flowers in spring and the changing of leaves in the autumn, to be able to appreciate beautiful music, to be conscious of the beauty of tasting and feeling and hearing only the things that are good for you, to be aware of why you're here, I could go on and on and on, but... Well, why don't you, Father? <laughs> I think I will. Every time you're near a rose, aren't you glad you've got a nose? And if the dawn is fresh with dew, Aren't you glad you're you? When a meadow lark appears, aren't you glad you've got two ears? And if your heart is singing too, aren't you glad you're you? You can see a summer sky or touch a friendly hand or taste an apple pie. Pardon the grammar, but ain't life grand. And when you wake up each morn, aren't you glad that you were born? Think what you've got the whole day through. Aren't you glad you're you? Well, Patsy, I'll leave you with those few little thoughts. What do you make of them? Well... If you can't appreciate your five senses, then your life isn't worth five cents. That's good, good. Hope you do well tomorrow. Thank you, Father. I feel much better. I feel pretty good myself. <laughs> Children, I'm putting you on your honor. Who did this? It's your duty to tell me. We're honored with your visit, Father. Be seated, children. Won't you take my chair? We'll take this matter up later. I will continue. I want you to read what you've written so Father Malley may hear it. Luther. Luther? How'd he get in here? We never knew. The Five Senses. I'd like to see a good movie with Roy Rogers. I like the taste of ice cream cones, especially strawberry. I like to listen to The Lone Ranger 
Hi ho, silver. I like the smell of hot dogs at the ballpark. I like the feel. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't laugh, children. Don't laugh. Luther means he wants to be a good boy. You want to feel good in here, don't you, Luther? No, sister. What I meant to feel good is like when the bell rings at three o'clock or when it's Easter vacation, better still. That's how I meant to feel good. Well, it has both honesty and imagination. So you can sit down. And now, uh, Patricia. The six senses. Well, the subject I gave you was the five senses. Well, I chose for my subject six senses. Well, go on, Patricia, go on. The six senses. To see, to hear, to taste, to smell, to feel, to be. And the most important is the last. The sixth sense is to be able to enjoy the five senses properly. To be. That's what really matters. It's like a world inside us, and it's up to us what we make of it. We see others, we hear others, we know others with our five senses. But how do we ever know ourselves? Through common sense. Common sense is an internal sense, whose function it is to differentiate between the various reports of the senses, or to reduce these reports to the unity of a common perception. Two great words. To be. Other words grow out of them. I am, you are, he is, we are, they are. <laughs> that sort of takes in everybody. As Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true, and it shall follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. And he was so right, sister. He was just talking about the sixth sense. To put it in my own words, to be or not to be, that is the question. Very good, Patricia. Very good. And one more thing, sister. Save for the bell. Amen. You may go now, children. Well, I really learned something. Shows a lot of promise, don't you think, sister? Oh, definitely. What are you going to give her, a B, perhaps? Oh, no, I think an A. Good, that's fine. As a matter of fact, I think it should be maybe an A plus, don't you, Father? Oh, well, that might be oh, overdoing it, it a little. It had a plus quality to it. Oh, yeah, well, a girl like Patsy needs a lot of encouragement. She, she has such a fine mind. Yes, remarkable. In fact, she has the mentality of a man your age. <laughs> There's another sense, you know, sister. Oh, don't tell me. Yeah, sense enough to know when to leave. Hey! Morning, sister. Hey! Little Bobby wants to play with you.
up to you, Tommy. But if you're a good sport, we'll shake hands and we'll be friends. I'll even buy you an ice cream cone. Two scoops? Two scoops. Okay. Say, Eddie, how did you learn to fight? That's yeah, how secret. about that? Sister, you, uh, you missed some excitement here. I did? Yes, you did. Uh, Yes, you did. <clears throat> it was quite a fight. That, uh, that little Eddie there, that, that is Eddie, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, that's Eddie. That's the little boy that was in that fight a few weeks back? Mm-hmm, yes. Quite a change. It's incredible. He's an improved man. I wonder. Does it mean anything, Father? Does it prove anything to beat up your fellow man? Somehow, don't you think it's what we are in here that matters? I mean, I mean to be. You're so right. <clears throat> but how do you account for such a sudden change in such a short time? Oh, we, we try to do our best to raise masculine little men with our limited knowledge of the outside world. children can't keep their minds on what they're doing. It's the first grade, you know, and they're easily distracted. You mean we're making too much noise? To you use your own words? Yes, Father. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, well, sister, we heard about your play and we prepared a little surprise for you. You know, you can't have a Christmas play without Holy Night or a Dusty Fidelis. Oh, yes, yes. You mean there's no room in your play for Holy? Not in our play, Father. What? I'd certainly like to see a play like that. Well, would you like huh? to see a rehearsal? Yes, I certainly would. You can't stay here and practice a while. I'm going to check into this. What are you going to use for music? Come with me and you'll find out. Bobby! Bobby! Well, here he is. Here's the little man I was telling you about. Oh, I know, Bobby. He's an old pal of mine. You in the play, Bob? Yes, in fact, I read it up. Oh, oh I bet you got a good part, huh? Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> Can we see the play now, Bobby? Well, it's a little bit not good. You see, we're just practicing it. Uh, it'll be better at Christmas. Yeah, but we won't mind a few mistakes. No, what's the play about? Oh, well, that's what I tell you at the beginning. Well, why don't we begin? You ready? I must tell you, the children have done this all by themselves. Every time they do it, the dialogue is different. Every line is a surprise to me. Heaven knows what it's going to be at Christmas. Do it in front of their parents. They'll probably forget everything. This is Mary and I'm Joseph, and we're going to Bethlehem to see if we can have some place, find some place to stay. And that's all you have to know, really. Mary, 
you can't stay there because we don't have any money. I'll be all right, Joseph, as long as I'm with you. Well, you see, I think we ought to find a house because it might rain or snow. It's winter, you know. Well, why don't you try uh, next door? Good idea. Knock, 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 knock. Can't stay here because you don't have any money. I didn't even ask you yet. Go back and start it again. Knock, 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 knock. Hello, Hello. there. This is Mary and I'm Joseph. And could we, could we stay here for the night, please? Do we have any money? No, but Mary's awfully tired. Could you think it over? Okay. What did he say, Joseph? He said he'd think it over. Well, when will he know? I don't know. Hey, Joseph. I thought it over. You can stay in the stable. Well, glory be! Did you hear that? Yes, Joseph. Now, Bobby, sing Holy Night, perhaps? No, Father. We have another song. Oh, how's it go? Simplicity is beautiful. I wouldn't change a word of it. Oh, but they will. You won't be needing my talents at Christmas. Uh, no, no, Father. Maybe at the Easter time I could stage an egg hunt, hmm? Mm -hmm. Look, sister. There's Father O'Malley. I hope he finds him in a favorable mood. He could be. It's spring, you know. No, we're not getting anyway, Father. We got to... Well, it's a difficult decision to make, Mr. Bogartis. To decide that there, there'll be no more St. Mary. <laughs> if you ask me, it's not much now. It is to the sisters. You see, to you, that, that school is just a piece of property. But to them, it's... Well, it's everything. It's not just the idea of selling you the property. It's... It's the thought of selling them out. Now you're getting a little sentimental on your father. Well, it's just that I've been here long enough to find out how they feel. What are they going to do when it's condemned? They're expecting a miracle. A miracle? What kind of a miracle is going to get them out of trouble? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Oh, oh No, no, Delphine, you're not doing it right. Show me, sister. You don't hold it right, for this is the way to hold it. And straight. 
And then you, you chop it. Don't chop like that. Keep your hands together and step into it. You see? Hit one, sister. Come on, throw it. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You better do it. Oh. Yay! Chance, Bogart, is they're coming over to apologize. Why don't you ask them if, if they're willing to sell? You mean if it's all right with them, it's all right with you? Oh, definitely. I'll recommend it. Of course, you'll have to see the bishop. The bishop? Oh, yes, he has the final word. What kind of a man is he to do business with? <laughs> you'll be glad to come back to me. And you'll have to anyway, because I have to give you a letter so you can see the bishop. And I can't give you a letter to see the bishop until you straighten yourself out with the sisters. Here they come now. Good luck. Oh, I'll never get this deal closed. Is he very angry? I think you'll find him quite forgiving. You mean forgiving? Do you mean it would be a good time to ask him, Father? Never be any better. Oh, we are so sorry, Mr. Bogart. Oh, that... It's nothing, sister. It's perfectly all right. We'll pay for it. Don't we'll... think of it, sister. It's nothing. It's a little hard to get glass today, but I get it. It is a magnificent building you have here. Thank you, sister. I know exactly how you feel when I look at that tumble-down school of yours. I have one problem, however, before my dream is complete. It's a parking problem. You see, the Bogardis Corporation will have several hundred employees, and they all have cars. Parking's becoming more of a problem every day. <laughs> you see, uh, here's where my desk's going to be. Here are the blueprints. It would take us years to raise the money to build a building like this. Oh, you could never do it. You'd be surprised what it's cost me. Would you like to see the rest of my building? Oh, yes, by all means. You just follow me. Shall we ask him now? Ever seen anything like this? Tremendous, Mr. Bogardis. 15,000 square feet without a column. <clears throat> Balcony seats 400. We can hold dances here, conventions, everything. It certainly is ideal. It's perfect. The Lord must have been the architect. I wish he had been. <laughs> I had Butler and Dee and a couple of thieves rob me right and left. Cost me 30% over the estimate. But you must be very happy with your accomplishment. There's just one thing could make me happier, and you know that. I believe we're thinking about the same thing. Yeah? It isn't what we acquire in life, is it? It's what we give. And this, this is a monument to you. I can see the cornerstone reading, donated to St. Mary's through the generosity and benevolence of Horace P. Bogardus. Oh, you're a very fortunate man, Mr. Bogardus. I am? You know, it's more blessed to give than to receive. This will live long after your dust. Now, that is real happiness. Can't you just picture that? Would you mind saying that again? Picture what? When I'm dust? <laughs> but you don't have to make up your mind right away. Why don't you sleep on it? I can't sleep now. I know you're surprised, but you shouldn't be. Sometimes we don't know why we do things. You didn't know why you built this building. I didn't? I thought I did. No. You built it in answer to our prayer. We've been praying and praying for this. And we're going on praying. You mean to say that you now got the idea that, you, that... We, we leave you now. With this thought, donated to St. Mary's through the generosity and benevolence of Horace P. Bogardus. Generosity? Benevolence and dust.
I'm sure that nice little man is going to give us his building. We must pray and keep on praying until... God's will be done. And may God's will be our will. But what if our prayers aren't answered? Oh, thou of little faith. We have reason to know. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Therefore, let thy voice rise like a fountain, night and day. Now, what's all the excitement? Notre Dame win another one? <laughs> oh, no. No. I asked him. And? He didn't say no. Oh, so you finally got here, eh? Been waiting for you fellas since six o'clock. Will you stop flying off the handle? You're working too hard, Horace. You ought to be home in bed. With this building on my hands, should have been ready for occupancy three months ago. You don't know how much money I'm losing. If you're talking about money now, why don't you see your banker? I'm your doctor. You can't go on like this, Horace. You know what I'm going through. It took me three weeks to get that piece of glass. There you are, brother. Sign this, will you? What's this? What's, what's, uh, what's all this? What's all what? Sign it. I want to know what I'm signing. I can't sign... That's that. overtime. We get time and a half after 6 o'clock. Well, you should have been here before 6. I was here. Didn't even leave to go to my doctor's Listen, office. Listen, bub. One more crack out of you. We'll take that glass back, and it'll take you six weeks to get it put in again. Sign it. See what I'm up against? Calm down, Horace. The way they do, see? You mustn't let anything upset you. Yeah, I know, I know about it. You're too big a man for that. Yeah, I'm not so big. Mm. Go home and get a good night's rest. Home. Nothing can take the place of a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. Rest. Mm -hmm. Tranquil. <clears throat> Relax. Why, a man in your man position hasn't got a worry in the world. Sit. Just keep saying to yourself, Yeah, I, I can am. say it, but I won't feel it. Now, what's the matter? <sighs> you don't know what they're doing to me. I'll stop that. <laughs> what's the matter with you, Horace? First, you're out of patience. Now, you're out of class. Now you want me to sleep. What's new, Horace? I heard the crash. I wondered if anybody got hurt. Oh, uh, Father O'Malley, Dr. McKay, my physician. How do you do, Doctor? I'm glad to know you, Father. Thank you. Say, that's really too bad. Isn't uh, glass a little hard to get these days, Horace? Oh, hard to get. Say, it is. Can't you get him to stop that, Father? Stop it, Horace? Why, I think it's beautiful. His nerves are. All shot. It's hardly noticeable. Yeah. <laughs> what is that, Father? Isn't that old Sanctissima? That's right, Doctor. Beautiful. I've heard it many times. Mm -hmm. How do the words go? Mm. Oh. Could be good news. Oh, I'm so glad. She's been getting along so well. If 
Well, if anything should happen to upset oh, now, her now... take it I... easy. Nothing well, has happened. What's it got to do with Patsy that you said it had, had something to do with Patsy? Well, it has. I found her father. Joe. <laughs> I think so. I told him the story as you told it to me. I described you to him and... Uh, how on earth did you run him down? Well, he's a piano player. Once a piano player, always a piano player. I got him to the musicians' union. I went right to the top. Petrillo. I really don't know what to say. <laughs> Neither do I. Well, um... <laughs> is, uh, is he in town? In town? He's here. He's out in the hall. Oh, no. Yeah. Shall I bring him in? Oh, no. Not... Well, that is... Wait just a minute, will you? I, uh... You know. Exactly been on ice, you know. <laughs> well, shall we? Do me a favor, will you? What's that? Play the piano. Oh. Please, please. I want Father to hear you. I've been telling him all about you. <laughs> Don't let me down. L listen to this, Father. He's really good. What was that song we used to love so much? You mean, uh, By the Sea? No, Joe. <laughs> No, it, it it had a bit of the rosary in it. But but that that wasn't the melody. Joe, don't you remember? We said that that no matter what happened, that song would always see us through. And then we pressed the rosebud in the book. Where's the book? Mm. <clears throat> What's the matter, Father? Do you know it? I oh, sure. That's an old song called uh, In the Land of Beginning Again. What? <laughs> Why'd you say so? You never asked me. <laughs> well, come on over here and get in there. You'll be sorry. There's a land of beginning again. Are always blue. Though we've made mistakes, that's true. Let's forget the past and start life anew. Though we've wandered by a river. Sunshine won't come through. Let's find that paradise where sorrow can't live and learn the teachings of forget and forgive in the land. Where 
broken dreams come true. The girls are all excited, aren't they, sister? Yes. Reminds me of when I graduated. Yes, it's a big moment in their lives. Incidentally, it's the first time they're wearing high heels. They aren't on one side. Right here. Yes, over here. Over here. You don't want to stop. Oh, look, girls. Sister Benedict's giving Patsy all the attention. Oh, no, Delphine, that isn't right. Patsy's teacher's pet. Meow. She is, Jealous. too. You gave her the prettiest dress. It would look much better on me, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, girls, I think that's about enough. You better, you better take your dresses off. That's enough. Sister, I just got a funny idea. Suppose, after all this, I flunk. Wouldn't that be terrible? <laughs> oh, oh, don't sister, let's worry you about wouldn't that. do that to us, would you? Oh. You're going to ask easy questions? No, Sister, no. it would be a great idea to cut out the finals entirely. Well, yeah. 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 Oh, no, you can't get around me that way. Run along now, take the dresses off. Be careful. Sister. Yes, sir. I was just thinking, could I take this dress over and show it to my mother? Yes, certainly. I think that'll make her very happy. Thank you, sister. I know it will. Okay, darling, I'll get the tickets to Syracuse. Goodbye, Joe. Bye, This one two ways, sister. Yes and no. All right, Lou. Run Thanks. Thanks. I'm sorry, Patsy. Time is up. Can I come in? Certainly. Oh, don't get up. I'm just the pastor here. Grading the papers, I see. Yes, Mother. They're a wonderful bunch of children. Yes. You should be very proud of them. We are. I ran into some of the girls out there, and they're, they're dying with curiosity about their marks. I, I'm supposed to come in and, uh, <clears throat> without your knowing, of course, find out how they turned out. I presume you opened your heart and passed them all, didn't you? All but one, Father. Patsy? Oh, no. Well, this is only one subject. The others are even worse. Her average is below 60. Well, she, uh, she got the date right, and she, she spelled her name right. Couldn't you give her something on that and add it up again, maybe pass her? Don't you think the honor of the school means anything? But what about Patsy? St. Mary's isn't being very much help to her. Don't you think we should help a child like that? Just beginning to believe in herself, and a blow like this, the uh, child may never get over it. Do you believe in just passing everybody, Father? 
Maybe. Maybe I do. I can't believe you mean it. Well, it's easier for some children to make the grade than others. They don't have to study. But I've known some that got the best marks in school and, and never made much of a mark afterwards. I knew a character once, a fellow named uh, Elmer Hathaway. He and I went through school together. Or rather, I went through school. Elmer just stood still. I think he was three years in the eighth grade. <laughs> He's quite a boy. The teacher often wondered how he found his way to the schoolhouse. Sometimes he didn't. Kids used to make fun of him. He's sort of a dreamer. Sometimes he'd even forget what day it was and he'd come to school on Saturday. Asked him who Plato was one day and he said, Plato who? But he was good with his hands. He built a boat, a sailboat. One time he disappeared for oh, two or three days. When he came back, they, they asked him where he'd been and he said, oh, just sailing. Well, he got to be about a foot taller than anybody else in the class. And they felt sorry for him, so they decided to pass him. Besides, I think they needed the desk at the time. He never knew about it, and from that time on, he developed assurance. You've heard of the uh, Hathaway shipyards, haven't you? Yes. That's Elmer. And to this day, he takes care of his less fortunate pals. You know, the ones that used to get uh, 99 and 100. If any of them are broke or out of a job, they can always work for Hathaway. He's a good man. By the way, just what is passing, anyhow? 75, you know. Yes, I know that, but who started it? Our school is based on Every school is, if we don't have standards. Yeah? But, but certainly you're not serious. I am. Aren't we here to give the children a helping hand, or are we here to measure their brains with a yardstick? Why do they have to have 75 to pass? You would put the standard at 65, Father? Why not? Then why not at 55? Why any grades at all? Why don't we close the school and let them run wild? Maybe. Be better than breaking their hearts. That's unfair, Father. My heart aches for Patsy. And when you infer it doesn't hurt me, you're being very unjust. Please realize I've done everything possible to help her. But I must uphold our standards. If you order me to pass her, I shall do so. But her mark remains the same. Come in, Patsy. Your sister. Oh, Father. Patsy? Uh, I failed in my sister. Yes, you did. That's what I thought. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right, sisters. It wasn't your fault. I was, I was just thinking that, well, I, I won't be needing this now. And, and look, Delphine liked it so much. I was just thinking that, uh, I was just thinking that maybe I'll do better next year, sister. Sister, you and I have had our little differences of opinion, but they haven't been important. This is, this is serious. I'm not going to order you to do anything. It's up to you, but... But she failed. Hey, Luther made one! Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right I'll go with sister. What's happened? Sister Benedict's quite ill. She had a fainting spell in the chapel. Did you call a doctor? She doesn't want one. Oh, she doesn't, huh? Come in. The doctor's on his way over. How are you feeling, sister? Who sent for a doctor? She did. You can't trust the man. He's an informer. How are you feeling, sister? I feel all right. Won't you sit down, Father? I want to talk to you. What have I done now? You've been writing. You've been writing to Mother General. Oh? Uh -huh. Good.
going over my head. Yes, I received that letter from her. Well, I just wrote uh, expressing my own opinion, sister. But I hope that hasn't brought this up. No. No, I'm just tired. But you actually considered tearing down St. Mary's and sending our children to St. Victor's. That's right. I thought about it quite a bit. We have to face facts, sister. Yes, I know what you mean, Father. We've tried so hard not to face facts. But there, there must always be a saint. Of course, of course, sister. Now, just relax. Take it easy. Pardon me, but the doctor... Come is... in. Come in, doctor. Hello, Polly. It's Dr. McKay, sister. How do you do, doctor? How do you do, sister? He's Mr. Bogardus' doctor, you know. Oh, yes? Are you his personal physician? Yes. Uh, mm. I have other patients. Uh, Possibly a hundred or so, and Horace P. Bogardus. Mm -hmm. Lately, he's been a full-time job. Brings me up all hours of the night. We pray for him all the time. That's very nice. He certainly could use it, but may I ask why? Well, they need a new school, Doctor, and they're praying for Mr. Bogardus to give them his building. Give? Bogardus? <laughs> Pardon me. All right, I have a sense of humor. Yes, well, maybe your prayers are having some effect on him. He can't sleep nights. That's why I'm giving him sleeping tablets. Prayer is a wonderful thing, Father, but if Bacardus ever gives you that building, I'll, uh... To pop up nothing spectacular, Doctor. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't do much here. If, if you're well enough to come down to the office tomorrow, I'd like to give you a check. But there, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just tired. I know, I know, but you let me be the judge of that. I want to find out the cause of your being tired. She'll be there, Doctor. You keep right on praying, sister. But not tonight. You need a good night's rest. So does Bogardus. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you heard what the man said. You take it easy. Now, you won't forget, Father. You'll see that she gets down to the office tomorrow. Well, she has a mind of her own, you know. I'll get her down there. Is this anything serious? Well, she's running a little temperature. You say she's had these attacks before? That's what I heard today, yes. I hope it's nothing serious. She's such a remarkable woman. She certainly is. I could tell that the minute I walked into the room. Does she really believe that Bogardus is going to give that building? Yes. Well, I've heard of such things, but I've never come across it before. Not since I was a little boy and I wished for what I wanted for Christmas and got it. Sort of the same thing. But when we grow up, we, we get practical. She's not very practical, is she? Oh, she thinks she is. What is she going to do when she doesn't get it? <laughs> now she's got you worried. <laughs> yes, she has. I hate to see her disillusion. Say, Doctor, not to change the subject much, but uh, Bogardus has a bad heart, hasn't he? Yes. What are you giving him for it, pills? Why? Have you got a better prescription? Well, I, I knew a fellow once. He had a very bad heart. In fact, they only gave him six months to live. He spent that six months doing so much good. Do you know that he lived to be 90? That's so. You mean uh, doing good for others is good for a bad heart? You spend your life doing for others, don't you, Doctor? Yes. Yes. How's your heart? Fine. There you are. <laughs> are you tampering with the laws of medicine? Well, we have a good deal in common, Doctor. We're both <laughs> interested in the good heart. And your suggestion is, perchance, that I change my prescription? You're at the doctor. I'm not so sure, O'Malley. <laughs> Good day. Good day. Mr. Bogardus. Father O'Malley. Oh, yes, Father O'Malley. Excuse me, I didn't see you. I thought it was you, but you seem to be looking right past me. Oh, my mind was a million miles away. Yes, you don't seem to be yourself today. Oh, I'm not, Father. I've just come from my doctor. You know, Father, 
If I had to live my life over again, there'd be a lot of changes made. Uh -huh. Yeah, a lot of changes. You know, there's great beauty in this world. If you just have the eyes to see it. Isn't there, Father? Oh, naturally. Thank you. Oh, yes. Life can be very beautiful. That's right. And you know, Father, you've spent your whole life doing things for people. No, I... Oh, yes, you have. Come to think of it, Father, how's your heart? Great, great. That's what I mean. Would it be all right, Father, if I go into the church? You're perfectly welcome. There it is. And here's a thought that might help you. It meant a lot to me. I shall pass this way but once. If there's any good I can do for anyone, let me do it now and not put it off. For I shall not pass this way again. Oh, thank you, Father. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Goodbye. Thank you. <coughs> I left it there. <laughs> I nearly did. Are you going well, to get off to church? I'm sorry about this, sister. I didn't realize you followed me into the church. <laughs> Sweet little fellow. <laughs> well, that's quite all right. Bring him any time. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I see that animals love you. Oh, yes, but people don't. Oh, you must be wrong. I'm sure that when people get to know you, they love you. No, 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 that's when they don't. You see, sister. Yes, Mr. Goddard. I've never had any children of my own. And I've never even liked children. And they don't like me. Why don't people like you? Well, I've been very selfish. And lately I've been giving it a lot of thought. Come to any conclusion? Yes. This is going to surprise you. And I do want people to like me. So. I was wondering if you would accept my building. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> it's a bit of a shock to you. Yes, yes. 
Well, you can have it. You can have it. I'll go straight to my lawyer and have him make out the deeds right away. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bogardus. St. Mary's will never forget it, and the children will love you. They will? I'll have the necessary papers made out right away. Yes. Come on, doggy. Come on, come on, come on. That was lovely. What is it called? Oh, it means so. Uh, oh, it's spring. <laughs> Don't let me slow you up. Sing something else. Well, what do we know? How about, uh, you know Birmingham Bertha? <laughs> oh, God. Soon. How about the school song, then? Oh, yes. Sister has a new version of it with effects and everything. She's a bit proud of it. We'll sing that. Won't you sing the melody, Father? Sister, you talked me into it. Probably the happiest person alive. Isn't it wonderful what faith can do? Father, everyone's so happy around here. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I examined Sister Benedict. Could she be sent away for a while? Why? Where? Oh, someplace like Arizona, for instance. You see this area here? Yes, what is it? That's the right lung. And here, in this oh, area... I, I never could make anything out of those things. What is it, Dr. TB? Yes. A very early stage. Oh, it's not that bad. We're lucky to catch it right now. That's what I meant when I asked if she could be sent to a drier climate. To an 
infirmary or a home for old people, some place where she could have light duties, not another school. It has to be done. I guess it can be done. Not to be with children. Uh, not for a while. Uh, not until this condition is cleared up. Does she know about this? Uh, not yet. It's very important that she does know it. She has a wonderful vitality, a natural optimism, and that's the best medicine anyone can have. If that spirit is dampened, it would, it would have a depressing effect and delay a recovery. She laughs to know about it. We, we can't just send her away without... Don't you people uh, more or less uh, go where you're told without question? Yes, we're supposed to have the stamina to take it. She has plenty of that. But you don't quite understand, Doctor, you see. Sister and I haven't always agreed on how to run a school. But one rather serious difference of opinion. Now she's sent away without any explanation. Why? She's bound to think that... Up to here, Father, we were discussing her health. What's best for her? And now we're discussing your feelings. It's a heck of a way to put it, Doc. I only want to see her get well. Well, I guess I can see to it that she's transferred. Not to tell her why. Send her away without any explanation. He would put it that way. Her opinion of me or her health. Right down here, man. with an ease. You know how they go. You remember. Good morning, Father. Good morning, sister. Look out. Look out, Father. You're in the way. Yeah, let me help you with that. There. Oh, just put it down there. That'll do for now. I'm so glad you came over, Father. I have so much on my mind, and I, I want, want to you to help you. Too, now, sister. when you bring the desk, put, let me put it over here. Yes, sister. Let's go where there's less noise. And now we can finally tear down our old school, and that can become our playground. It's all so wonderful. And I'm tired. I think I'll sit down for a minute. You've been working too hard. You shouldn't be lifting things around here. <laughs> oh, it must be all the excitement. Now. What was it I was going to say? Yes, about commencement. Did you ask Mr. Bogardus? Yes, and the doctor. Fine. He's a nice man. He telephoned and, and told me that I had nothing to worry about. Yes, I, I'd have you know that he said there was nothing wrong with me. I'm perfect. That is good news. Yes. Oh, well, Bob Bogardus, you want me to thank him publicly? Oh, yes, by all means. And convey our sincere gratitude for his wholehearted generosity. But don't make a long speech. Oh, sister, I'll be the soul of brevity. The children would be restless, and the parents would be interested on them then. Yeah. But of course, you'll impress upon the graduating class that they must never give up their pursuit of learning, and at all times carry up the most in their minds the ideals of St. Mary's. Yes, I, I think that'll take care of everything, Father. I think uh, I'm going to be long-winded. Why don't you write the speech? <laughs> I have, Father. I have it here. <laughs> and I have one more wish. The next year will be a joyous and successful and that we will never have any more misunderstandings. Serious ones, I mean. I know how you feel about Patsy. You still disagree with me, don't you? Father, sometimes we have to do things that aren't easy. No matter how much they hurt us, we, we have to do what we believe is right. I have something to tell you, sister, that isn't going to be easy. What is that, Father? Will you be notified shortly? That sister Michael is going to be in charge here next year. She... 
She'll be so happy. Her assistant. It's only fair to tell you, sister, that you're being transferred. We shouldn't become too attached to any one place. Any other school may seem strange at first, but as long as I am around children, I'll be happy. How do you know all this? Have you been writing Mother General again? Will I be here for graduation? Yes, sister, of course. Is this the desk that goes in your office, sister? Yes. Yes. Was there anything else you had to say, Father? That was all? Yes. I'll go with you. Who is that? My mother's sister. Is she here for the exercises? I guess so. You didn't tell her you're not graduating? No, sister. My dear child, why not? She's been out of town. It's embarrassing, Patsy, I know. But you mustn't feel so badly about not graduating. If we don't fail sometimes, our successes won't mean anything. You must have courage. Don't give up. I'll explain to your mother so she won't think ill of you. I know she loves you, and you love her, and where there's love, there's complete understanding. Understanding? If you ask me, nobody understands anything. You don't understand anything. Father O'Malley doesn't understand anything. My mama does... Oh, sister, I'm sorry. What is troubling you, Patsy? Oh, sister, help me. Oh, please help me. Yes, of course. Of course I want to help you. I want to be a nun, sister. How can I become a nun like you? There's one thing I do know. Something is troubling you. No. 
No, I just want to be a nun. You don't say it that way, my dear. I want to be a nun. You don't become a nun to run away from life, that. It's not because you've lost something. It's because you've found something. You're still a little girl. You don't know yet. Oh, but I do. I just want to be like you. You don't know what the next four years will bring. You haven't been to high school yet. Those are years you'll always treasure. New companions, new interests, lots of fun, as well as study. Going to, to parties, to football games, your first prom. First walls. You can't give up these things if you know nothing about them. Not until you have known all this and more. Can you say with complete understanding, I want to be a nun? Oh, but I can't. I can't. I know them all now. Well, then, Patsy, there's another thing. Your marks aren't good enough. You have to pass your examinations. But I could have. I could have passed. I didn't want to. You mean you failed on purpose? I thought maybe I could stay here another year. Everything's so nice here, sister. You don't know. But everything's so clean and, and so good and... Well, even if I am in the same grade, I don't care. I'd be with you. I'm beginning to see what's wrong. Did Father O'Malley know about this? Nobody knew, sister. Nobody but me. I. No, sister, you're wrong. But can be used as a preposition as well as a conjunction. And then it takes the objective case. Oh, dear me. Now, that wasn't the examination, wasn't it? Uh-huh, and I missed it. Well, I'm brighter than you think I am, sister. Go ahead, ask me some more questions. Honestly, I wouldn't be a dumb nun. Sister, this is Mr. and Mrs. Joe Gallagher, Patsy's mother and father. How do you do? Patsy, your father. Hello, Patsy. like that, Patsy. Give me time. I may grow on you. Children over in the house, often as you like. You, well, you, you won't be lonely anymore. Oh, Mama. Oh, Mama. Is this my real daddy? Yes, darling. Yes. We came to see you graduate, Patsy. Isn't it time you were getting ready? We were just about to get ready, weren't we, Patsy? Yes, sister. How were her marks, Father? I uh, didn't see her report card. Hmm? Well, her marks, oh, they were exceptional. There wasn't a child in the class anywhere near her. Oh.
My dear friends, this is indeed a great day for St. Mary's. I might call it the first birthday of the new St. Mary's. There's the old, and here's the new. And we owe it all to the generosity and the benevolence of one man. A man whose name will be graven on our cornerstone and in our hearts for many years to come. And speaking of hearts, a truly great heart beats in the bosom of Mr. Horace P. Bogartis. <laughs> Bogartis is a very modest man. But when you have a heart that loves children, that thinks only of others, and that's capable of doing so much good, then, my friends, you have a heart that can laugh at the years. <laughs> Mr. Bogartis is a fine example of the joy of giving. To him, every day is Christmas. Indeed, he has holly in his heart. Thank you. <laughs> St. Mary's is founded on faith, hope, and charity. And the greatest of these is charity. And a gift to the church, you know, is deductible. Thank Mr. Bogardus for his generous gift. Now I'd like to say a few words to the boys and the girls in our graduating class. I'm going to make it very brief. Today is a joyous one for you because you're graduating. It's also a sad one because you're leaving St. Mary's. I can't sum up in a few minutes what you've learned here in eight years. What you're taking with you is, is not just what was in the books. That's important, but it isn't everything. What you are taking with you is what you have to give now to others. What the good sisters have taught you. I want to say right here that if any of you are ever in trouble, no matter what, you just dial O for O'Malley. Did you order the cab? Yes, it'll be waiting outside. Sister Benedict in chapel? Thy holy will in all things. Please, please help me. Are you going with me, Sister Angela? Yes, Sister. Goodbye, 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 Sister.
you know that wherever I am, my heart will always be with St. Mary's. Bye, Sister Benedict. Bye, Sister Benedict. Father. Sister, we know your heart will be here. We'll always remember you in our prayers. Sister, Sister Benedict. Sister, I can't let you go like this. Uh, you know, when Dr. McKay said you were perfect, he was right. And that's what you are. But he didn't mean physically. Because, sister, you have a touch of tuberculosis. Now, Dr. McKay felt that you shouldn't know about this, but I've... Thank you, Father. Thank you. You've made me very happy. I'll get well quickly now. Oh, of course you will, sister. Of course I will. And if you ever need anything, no matter what it is or wherever you happen to be. I know. I just dial O for O'Malley. Right. 